reading fluency. Okay? Remember, students read a lot of easy and interesting books. Okay? Now, it's overall understanding faster rather than slower. Now, I'm going to quickly go through this. Because students are reading as much as possible of easy, interesting books that they select, okay? And they're reading books that are easy. Now I've got a slight detour here. I've got a slight detour. My good friend Steve Krashen uh, says that to learn a new language, the input has to be slightly above where you are now. You've got to have a little reach to the input that you get. So the comprehensible input, Steve says, is I plus one. My counter to that is for learning to read, and especially becoming fluent, it should be I minus one. Now, Steve's target and my target are heuristics. You know, they're, they're, move, they're sort of targeted. Anyway, I was doing this in, uh, where was I? I was doing this in Thailand this summer at a Thai university. And after the workshop, one of the students, one of the teachers came and said, oh, I know why my students hate my reading class. Yeah. I give them I plus 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I plus 50. So, easy. Okay, now, who's that? You know who it is. It's my daughter, right? The one that said, Dad, don't bring any more teacups or whatever you do. Okay, now when Leanne was five, I was trying to do the things that all good fathers and mothers do. And I said to her, I said, Leanne, it's time for piano lessons. Right? Swimming, piano, football, all the things that we parents do for our kids. And Leanne looked at me and smiled and said, great idea, Dad. Let's take piano lessons. What did she say? Let's take piano lessons. I, I, I was really thinking of her, not of me. Then I thought for a minute and I said, you know, I really do like piano music. You know, if I'm a little tired, a little stressed out, down, I'll go take my iPod, put on the headset, and I'll listen to Beethoven's Fifth Piano Concerto. Anyone familiar with that? Powerful music, right? Ooh, it just lifts me up. I feel so much better. So I said, okay, Leanne, good. We'll go to piano And So I found a teacher in the neighborhood who took adult beginners and child beginners. We go for our first lesson. I have a half hour, Leanne. Boy, she knew I was showing you this. She'd be unhappy. She's five years old in that picture. She's 26 now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I go for the first half hour, and Leanne goes for the second half hour. Now, did my piano teacher Give me Beethoven's Fifth Piano Concerto. <laughs> Why? Too difficult, exactly. Did she give Leanne, uh, well, anyway, she didn't give me Beethoven's Fifth because it was too difficult. That's the goal, that's the target. She gave me music that was specially written for adult beginners. She gave Leanne music that was specially written for child beginners. Now, I'm telling you the story because a lot of people go back to the I minus one they get confused with this notion of authentic material, whatever authentic means. We have to start where our students are. If we're going to develop readers, we want them to be able to read with ease and understanding and comprehension, with confidence and with motivation. And that's where easy, interesting, self-selected materials comes in. Now, when that happens, oh. I added this this morning. I, don't know, I just wanted to give you a, a little. When I'm doing extensive reading for the very first time, all right, very first day, I got my class together. And I tell them, I'm going to give you three rules of extensive reading. Rule number one is really important. Okay? Is number one more important than number two? Yeah. <laughs> uh, generally, right? So pay attention to number one. Two and three are okay, but number one is really important. Okay? Uh, you might want to take note of this just in case you're, you want to have extensive reading, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. Very important. <laughs> so, now, how about number two? Is number two important? <laughs> right. And by number three, you know exactly where we're going. Right. right. Okay. So, uh, 
when, when all of these happen, when these things come together, and we've got students who are enjoying our reading, there's no link to fluency. 